<laughs> hey y'all. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry, I tried for like 20 minutes to figure out how to go live on Facebook. Can't figure it out. That the, I, I have my page back, but it's totally different and I can't figure out how to make it go. I figured it out earlier. Now I can't figure it out. <sighs> y'all, it's so frustrating. How are y'all? Okay, enough whining for one night. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. Alrighty. Oh. Y'all, it is just, I don't even know what it is. Hello, hello. There we go. All right. I think I got it now. I have to figure out the Facebook thing later because I don't know. Okay. How are y'all doing? So we're going to do... A couple of those tonight. Kind of move my stuff around. I had to bring everything back from the retreat and just kind of pile it on my table. Okay. Oh, look, there's more of that drink. Okay. I'm going to have to get those up. I am going to fall on those in a minute. I'd really rather not break my ankle again. There is like little plastic bags sitting down here and they're on the floor and I keep stepping on them and then I'm almost tripping. The retreat went awesome. It was awesome. We had so much fun. Everybody's project turned out absolutely gorgeous. It was just fun. We just had a good time. <sighs> but let me tell y'all. So I get to tell y'all all about my adventure. So on Thursday, we did a business day, and we did like a deep dive into Etsy, which I am going to offer to everyone soon. And look, you're stepping on one, don't trip. And why are you not using your walker, lady? Okay. So anyways, we start. Can you see things better? So we get started. And then I go to show them something on Facebook, and it's like, your Facebook page has been disabled. I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Apparently, my Facebook page got hacked like 10 minutes before we started. So I didn't really have a chance to deal with it until like Monday. So I do have access to my page and all that. But they have completely changed the way it looks. So I'm still trying to figure out where things are. <laughs> so until I can figure that out, we're probably not going to go live on there. Okay. I'm just, I'm not going to stress about that because y'all, it's the little things. Okay. We're going to do a bow for this guy. Look how cute he is. We're going to use this ribbon. I just made this today. I also made one um, for 4th of July. It has like blue in the back and then it has like little patriotic, like red and white and blue stuff on him. But I like this sunflower ribbon a lot. So I thought it would look really cute. So this is just, um, I printed the sign. I did list this as just a little five yard little thing. And we're going to do this as a bow. Our bow set. So they are all listed, though. <laughs> okay. Now. I got this. I actually got this ribbon right before the retreat. How cute is it? Can you see that? Look at that. It's Farmer's Market. It says, Farmer's Market Locally Grown. It has a little chicken on it. So it's very farmhouse. 
And I like this. I like to use gingham when I'm doing anything farmhouse. It just works really well with farmhouse. <clears throat> you have a lot of dog glitter? I think I'm confused by that statement. <laughs> oh man, you can tell they were cutting glue with my scissors. I'll have to fix those. Okay. Alright. I figured I'd give these to my nieces when they come for uh, Easter because they have chickens and all that stuff. Okay, so let's do six. Yeah, so you can't find me on Facebook because I haven't figured out how to go live on my new setup yet. <laughs> I tried. I'll get it figured out. It's just very different. I think that they have me on the old system, so I don't have profiles yet, and so I can't really, uh, this bow maker is in my shop. It's just uh, shophardworkingmom.com. You made the carrot? Awesome. So let's do three. I did, thank you so much, Kathy. I talked about it. When was when did I go live last? Friday? Because I got it, I think, on Friday. Thank you so much. I did get my treat. All right. So we've got these. Three. So we did three at six inches. Okay. Let's get y'all zoomed in a little better here. There we go. Oh, oh, okay. I get you now. Okay. So then we're gonna do two at six. Like that. Am I going to make any more paint kits? Yes, I am. Did they just fall back down? It fell. I'll get it. Okay. Maybe that's who knocked all the stuff out. Maybe my ghost is unhappy. <laughs> I don't have a ghost. <laughs> just teasing. <sighs> okay. So with these ribbons in this bow maker, what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and spreading them out. You don't have to do that. You can keep them stacked on top of each other if you want, if that makes you feel more comfortable. Because when we take them out, we're gonna fluff it anyways. I think that this makes it so that you don't have to spend as much time fluffing. So that's why I like to do it. Okay, so we did three, then two. Now we're gonna do one. Don't you love it when they do that? <clears throat> okay. Ooh, we gotta have our fan on. It's warm. I'll get, uh, I will get Facebook figured out by tomorrow, so I'll be back on there tomorrow. So y'all know that I started on YouTube, right? So I started on YouTube, so I wasn't really that stressed when I lost my account because I knew I still had my email list and I still had YouTube. So, so important, y'all. Don't put all your baskets. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So we're going to start on the white now. So don't do it. Don't put all your eggs in one basket because you never know when you're going to lose that basket. So whatever you do, make sure you're working on an email list because that is so important. So important. Email or text. Either one works. But the texting services are a lot more expensive. <laughs> 
so but I would I would spend a little time working on those making sure that you have a backup plan or at least have a plan if something happens like what you're gonna do so I had several admins on my business page so when my account got hacked we immediately had someone go in there and disable my page so that you know they couldn't like take it over they have tried a couple of times to get in and get it do I have any of the projects from the retreat I'll have to get them tomorrow we didn't have time to get them today but yes I will show you but anyways we um, we were able to lock it down and then she was able to give me my access back. So we are back on there. So I didn't lose that. But they immediately started running ads and charging me. <laughs> so we have been kind of fighting with Facebook about that. And Facebook better fix it because we notified them like, I'm going to say 10 minutes after it happened. So. Alright, so we're going to take this piece and we're going to fold it over and dovetail it. Let me see how long it is. It's 14 inches. Perfect. We're going to put this in. One's going to go down, one's going to go up. And then we're going to do another 14 inch. Whoop. Okay, and then pinch in the middle. Right there. What this will do is make it look like we have even more ribbons in there than we do. Alright, then I'm going to put one of this in. So this is our focal ribbon here. And of course it has a pattern so we're going to have to twist. And we're going to twist the top. So you see here, already you can see this one's upside down. So that's the one we're going to twist. mind the words one going up one going down because you can read them what drives me crazy is when the words are upside down so flip that okay now let's go back with our black here okay and so what you do is put it right in through this little center peg so I like to go sideways like this and then twist with one hand so you see how this side stays the same this side flips upside down now with these ribbons it's not as obvious because they're the same on both sides but when we come back and do this one it's going to be a lot more obvious so you want to twist it when you're using bow makers you can do it without it's a little bit more difficult but you want to twist it because that's how you get nice big fluffy bow getting that twist do the twist okay then we're gonna end with our little chickens again so this guy's upside down this guy's gonna be correct This is a nice big bow. So take this one, and all you do is pick it up and flip it over. It just makes it really easy to do it. Now look how thick that bow is. Can you see that? This is why we're using the bow maker. Because when I have a bow that's this thick, it's really hard to, you know, hold that or stack it on something Bow makers are just much better deal for that. Okay. 
Okay. So pull it right out. Okay. So you can see we've got that little groove in there. So the trick here is to hold it on one side because when you move it, none of your ribbons are going to move with it. Then you just want to take a minute to make sure as you're tightening it that it's staying in that groove. Another reason why I like the bow makers because they do create that groove and so it's really easy to make sure they stay the same size. See how they're the same size? Da -da 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 -da. I have some song stuck in my head. <laughs> and I tell you, I love getting the um, colored zip ties. So there's a place called, um, I think it's Zip Ties Unlimited. And that's where I get my colored zip ties. And they have these really long ones. So you see these really long ones? All right, so pull real tight. What's going on? All right, so now what we're gonna do, so see how we already spread everything out, right? As we were in the bow maker. So now it just makes it much easier to just go ahead and fluff it. So everything's pretty much in place. I can just kind of fluff. I can move it a little bit, make sure my tail stay down at the bottom. Okay. I go from, let me open this up a little bit. So, whoops. <laughs> I go from the bottom to the top. I want these little tails to stand up in the middle. See that kind of rounds out our bow. Then we have that little bit of extra. Is he mowing the grass in the dark? That's what it sounds like, doesn't it? <laughs> that guy is mowing the grass in the dark, y'all. Oh my goodness. I hope he can get it done before it gets too dark. I'll tell you another reason why I go completely up one side and then completely up the other side. If you are going, if you're a new bow maker, if you are going back and forth, it's really easy to get lost and not know which way is up and which way is down. So be super careful, especially when you're new at it, to take your time and go completely on one side and then completely on the other. how cute that is got our little tails up here we've got all of these cascading ribbons down at the bottom look at that that's a pretty bow see isn't that cute thank you what's going on with you Carrie you know, I miss all the conversations. I think the girls will like that, don't you? Now watch this. Okay, so here's one thing we did on the, on the, um, in the retreat. We did, what did I do with that one? Oh, here. Hey, Bailey. So this is one thing we did. Da, 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 da. See, I told y'all that thing is stuck in my head. All right, so this is this is one of our fences. So we did um, several different methods of decorating the fences. So see, that's the crackle effect. This one is the rustic. 
And then we started with the angel vine wreath and we made a nice, really cute little mini wreath. This is my favorite fern ever. I did order some more of that, but look, this is a um, garland and we didn't even use all of the garland. We used like half of the garland. We used one fern and two of these little lavenders. And then it comes out with this really pretty little project. But see, these fences are so cool, right? So, what I like about them. So, see, this is one I did not long ago. So, that's one rustic way. That's another rustic way. So, this one is more like a muddy brown. And this one is more like a barn brown, like a reddish brown. And you could take these. So people are asking me all the time what to put their ribbons on, right? Well, you can set this outside and just tie your bow on it like this. And then you set it outside your house. Because how stinking cute is that? And you can also take those little command hooks, which I thought I had one in here. I don't see one. I'll have to show y'all. You can also take bind wire, but I like to take the rustic, I mean the command hooks, and you can put a command hook right here in the center, and then you can hang a sign on it. See, and you can then easily change out the sign, change out the bow, and you've got a cute little, so. I like it. Alright, so I thought it'd be fun to do a little bow on this guy. What's it, Chuck E. Cheese? I am so lost. I have no idea what they're talking about. They're talking about Chuck E. Cheese now. <laughs> I don't even think I need to try. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to come out with some... Um, window panes that you can change out the sign in because sometimes you just get tired of making the same old thing all the time right I do sometimes so I love the fences and the and the little um, window panes because they're just fun to decorate so we're gonna our plan is to have different things that you can get as add-ons and then you can change it out for seasons and if you sell stuff then you can sell it with add-ons for different seasons there over there okay so there's a couple of ways you can do this we've got our remember this this is the wire from um tractor supply and remember to keep your little ties on it because it will like go crazy but one thing I like about this so this is like 17 gauge wire okay and you can bend it so it's bendable Oh, there they are. So, like, you can take it and bend it into a little thing like that. Whoops. There. You can put those little bubble gum things on it and you can, you know, tie it in here like that. Or you can do fine wire, which I think is what we're going to do today. Fine wire is one of my favorite things. Y'all, 
like vine wire. So if I want something to hang flat, I'm going to kind of put it out to the side like this and hang it from here. If you hang it kind of up here at the center, it's going to tend to want to flap over. So, and that's a trick for you. So if you hang something and it's kind of going one way or the other, put longer, put a longer piece on it to tie from, to hang from. That usually fixes it. Okay. There we go. Put that one in. Okay. Put this one in. Look at oh, this is so the sign is so cute. Okay, there we go. Just like that. So you see how this background is kind of like a rustic wood. So you could do that same effect on your fence. And then when you hang it, it's going to like make it almost look like, you know, it's hanging on that fence. You can also hang it over the fence like that. See how it hangs over that little rail piece. Can y'all tell I'm a little obsessed with the fences right now? Okay. Let's do a couple different kinds of bows here. So how do I get my signs to be level without being too loose? Okay, so what I do is I, I kind of have the first side fairly loose. And then as I'm tightening the second one, that's when I'm kind of checking to see if I need it. It's really easy to tighten it up. You can just kind of bend it over. But if you are having to, um, you know, if you're having to loosen it, it's much, much harder. So it's easier to tighten than it is to loosen. So it's better if it's just a tad loose than just kind of crimp it to get it tighter. Let's do like no 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 six inch maybe. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so six. Let's do like five. Okay. Okay. They don't need to be exactly the same, just approximate. So this way is what I would call a scrappy bow because it's kind of like with scraps. So that's why I tend to call it scrappy bow. All you do is pinch it, kind of arrange it. You want to make sure you have a point in the middle that they're kind of joining. I don't want to make a poinsettia, so I'm not going to do it all out. I'm going to do some kind of almost like a layering. But I don't want it to go all the way around because then it's going to make a poinsettia, and that's not what I want. There we go. Just like that. And then you can use some more of your bind wire. It's uh, Zip Ties Unlimited. Now you could do this with a zip tie, but I find that the bind wire specifically for these works a little better because you want it to be a little looser and then I just kind of spread it out kind of make them stand up a little bit and then I can either tie it right here on the corner 
or I can tie it up here. I am going to tie it on this corner because I don't want to cover up the word welcome. Sometimes I can get go right in that same hole or sometimes I just go around the thing, the wire. It's either Zip Tie Nation or Zip Tie Unlimited. I can't remember. It's one or the other. There's the hole. Okay. There. We got it. Okay. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? That's so cute. Look at that, that's so cute, that's so stinking cute. Okay. Oh my gosh, I do say that. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll have to explain that. <laughs> okay, so during the retreat we had like trivia and <laughs> one of the things was what do I say when I really like something and I said, oh, I say, it's so cute. And they said, no, you say, oh, that's so stinking cute. I didn't realize I said that. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so the other option is to put... Now, this is, I didn't tell y'all this. This is a 12-inch sign. So you can actually sell these to people as a door hanger because right now kind of the big sizes for door hangers for people for the doors is between 12 and 16 inches so this would work great as a door hanger it also works really great in an office it works hanging on a mailbox on a rocking chair like we have <laughs> one of these little fences all right so we'll do a small tail like four inches Let's do four inch like that, so four inch, four inch. Now you see this is a pattern, right? But they're all in the middle, so we don't have to worry about turning anything. So four and four and four. There we go. And then let's do one smaller one in the middle. Just like that. There we go. Oh, thank you. So just tie this at a cut this at an angle, I mean. Don't tie it at an angle. All right, I'm going to use bind wire again. So just like we do with our zip tie, we can slide it under. And what I'll do in this case is twist it one good time, and then I'm going to pull it up. Okay? Then I'm still going to do the same thing, y'all. I'm still going to hold it, and I'm going to move this piece around to the back. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold the wire, and I'm going to twist with the bow. So you don't twist with the wire, you twist with the bow. And then we can fluff it out. So you see how when I'm fluffing, what I'm doing is I'm moving it back and forth and I'm spreading it out. So that's the way to get the best fluff. See how nice and fluffy that side is? If I go to this side and I just put my fingers in it, can you see the difference? You see the difference? So you do want to do that. Okay. Now, so that would be what that one looked like. I wouldn't put both on the sign, but this way you kind of have options. 
<coughs> Got twisted a little too much. There we go. Now you can decide which side you like better. Uh, you get the bone maker in my shop. It's just shophardworkingmom.com. And this is the easy, easy bow stow and go. This is my new favorite one, I have to say. I'll tell you the reason. I'll show you the reason. There. Which one do you like better? The little fluffy one or the little loopy one? So scrappy or just regular bow? You have to tell me which one. That's why I like it. Look at this. Now I can stick it in my suitcase. That's why I like it, y'all. It's real easy. This comes out. You can just plop it back in there. Now listen, if it doesn't sit flat, you can kind of smack it with a hammer, but really it makes no difference. Even if it's not completely like flat on your table, it's light enough that it's not going to um, the regular bow. It's light enough that it's not heavy to move around, but it's heavy enough that it's not going to cause a problem. So I like it. I really like it. And it's, it's a good size. It's wide so you can see the numbers, which I need, but it's, um, you know, not real like big because I can't stand to have a big bow maker on my table takes up too much room. I have too much other crap in here. <laughs> and that's the truth. Gracious. Wait, okay, is it this way? No, it's this way. There. Nope, no. Y'all, I tell you, this thing, it has a mind of its own. <laughs> okay, so we did this one. I think I'm going to have to give my nieces the fence and all. What do y'all think? I need to make a little chicken to go down here at the bottom. Wouldn't that be cute? To have a little chicken or some eggs. You could put the little foam eggs down here. That would be cute, like right here in the middle. Like that. And then this one. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. All right. That was fun. I don't know what we're doing yet tomorrow, but... Oh, let me show y'all what I can do with this. Hold on. Are you running out of energy yet, Ma? No, I'm good. You're good? No? Quit doing that machine. Go this way. This way? Yeah. So, have y'all ever worked with these? This is, a, this is an angel vine wreath. Okay. These are, so I want you to look at them, okay? They're a lot more dense than a grapevine. See that? It's actual, like, little, I mean, y'all, to me it almost looks like pine straw, but it's not. It's an actual vine. It's almost like the little pieces of the grapevine that kind of swirl out. So, you know, here's the problem with grapevines, right? So you can tell I've done a couple things on it already, but... The grapevine, it's hard to make certain wreaths with grapevine because they have all that space in them, which is awesome, but not always. When I want to make, let's see, like if I want to make, um, if I want to make a wreath, that I just want like specific florals or something like that on it, I'm gonna go with an angel vine. So you see here we have some uh, hydrangeas. Now watch. You see how you don't really have to do anything besides stick it in there. Now of course you would wanna glue it in, but you see how nice that looks? How easy that is? You can actually push it in at an angle. You don't need as much of the stem. These are a lot less expensive than the grapevines. So 
So like if I'm going to do a, um, what is that one recall that we like? The boxwood. If I'm going to do a boxwood, I'm going to do it on this because these just do better. So we have all these really cute hydrangeas. So you can make a really cute hydrangea wreath just using a few bushes of hydrangeas. Now this one, I think this one is a 12 inch. You can get them smaller. We also have, let me show you what else we have. We have this stuff. Now look, you can see it's the same thing. So this comes in rope. Now I have this one cut up. But you can see it's the same, right? So all they do, is bend it over like this and they take fine wire and they just wrap around it and make it into a wreath. So these are cool because you can make them into shapes like a square one. That's what we're gonna do with it later this week. We're actually gonna take one of the Dollar Tree square wreaths and we're gonna wrap it in this and pretend like it's a grapevine. Cause it is so hard to find square grapevines Did I, I thought I brought, oh here, here it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I swore I brought some more in here. Yeah. Now watch this. You see these little pieces that came off? These, guess what? You can stick them in. Because unlike Grapevine, these are way more forgiving. So you can make a whole wreath out of the hydrangeas. This one. Let's go over a little bit ago. You see how cool that is? You just cut them, stick them in. little wreaths here <clears throat> you can make them into small wreaths you can make them in bigger ones and I see people trying to make these with grapevines and they just don't look the same and I think it's because it doesn't the grapevines don't have the shape so then they don't get that nice coverage like you do with this how pretty is that that's so pretty. That's so pretty. And um, it's like in my favorite colors. And I actually like these leaves. So even if I use all the florals, I'll keep the leaves. Because leaves are great to use in things when you're like, when you need something and you don't have a filler, you can put flowers, I mean leaves in. <laughs> So it looks like it would take maybe two and a half. You'd get pretty close to one, especially if you did a bow. This is two here, two bushes. Pretty darn close. Yeah, it would, right? Let's see. All right, let's use that in there. See how I go in at an angle? And then I can kind of bend it and it'll stand right up. Look at that. Look how cute that is. And you can make it really full. And then what you can do is use your ribbon. Like that. Where's my other? Oh, there they are. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? And we can make a little three loop bow. So if you do them by hand, this is the easiest way to do it. So you do a loop like that. 
then you do a second loop. You just pull it across and you can take these two and put your fingers together and they should match. Then you just do one more. Can you see I'm not twisting? So when I'm going away from me, I'm going under. When I'm coming towards me, I'm going over. I had to think about that for a second. Like I thought I was about to say the wrong thing. Okay. Gotta use more of our bind wire. It's a bind wire day. <laughs> there we go. So it looks really cute when you have what it looks like is ribbon hanging over things. Really what you're doing is behind the scenes, behind the ribbon, you make a little hook. So you just take your bind wire, just twist it on itself, and then it's super easy. See? And it looks like it's hanging from the ribbon, but it's actually going to hang from that bind wire. So look. Didn't have another one yet. See? How cute is that? Oh my god, that's so cute! Isn't that cute? That's pretty. It probably needs like a tiny bit more. But I don't think I have any more in here. But what do y'all think? You like it? I like it. So these are pretty dense. You can actually get away with not gluing it in. Um, it will still come out. But <laughs> if you put it in there sideways and then pull it kind of towards the front, it's going to stay in there. Because of the way that this is made, the way that these are made, see how, how they're dense and how it's kind of holding that in there, right? So unlike a grapevine, this is very dense and compact. So when you put things in there, it's in there. Nothing comes out the back. It's pretty cool, right? Aren't these cool? You can also do like... Um, I love to get these kinds of things. I missed y'all, can you tell? <laughs> I love to get things like this. These are, um, these are swax, garlands. They're garlands. This one is a, a, I think it's an olive branch garland. So I can get one of these giant garlands. And when I'm going to go to a show or something and I have to get some stuff together real quick, I can take things like this and you can take these angel vines and you just take your bind wire and you wrap the bind wire around where this stuff is. And then you have a, a wreath real quick. And these are real popular because they're the natural kind. Can you see how cool those are? Then you can kind of display them in different ways, like on little fences or old windows or things like that. And these take like five, ten minutes to make. See that? And out of one of these garlands, I can get two or three. So see? How quick and easy. Now, of course, I'm not wrapping it very well, but I think you get the idea. Uh, this is an angel vine wreath. That's what they're called. Yeah, it would be great on your she shed. Right? All right. Okay, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow night. We'll definitely do a wreath. I don't know yet what I, y'all... After the retreat, I got wiped out. But I got a whole bunch of stuff on order. So. 
and I have some stuff to enter in that's left over from the retreat. So you'll see it starting to go up during the week. Yep, and hopefully tomorrow I'll get Facebook figured out so we can go back on there again. <laughs> I missed y'all too. Alright, y'all have a great night. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm just going to save my little leaves. This is what I do. I take the little stems off and I just put them all on one stem. And then it doesn't take up as much space. And then I have a drawer down here at the bottom. I just throw them in that drawer because you never know when I'm going to need to use leaves. Red poppies. Ooh. That would be a cool idea. All right, y'all. Y'all have a great night. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, we did get... We got hole punches back in. Um, I have some... Um, clippers, blue clippers to list, and we got the bow makers in. So we're restocked on bow makers, we restocked on the hole punches. Oh, and we even have some of these that are pre-done. I need to get those listed too. All right, y'all have a great night, and we will see you guys tomorrow at 8. Yeah, on a reef, definitely, definitely we can do that. I just have to see what I can find. All right. Bye, y'all. Y'all have a good night. Bye.